Hey NBA 2K fans, in this video we're going to walk you through how free agency works in NBA 2K and also in the real life NBA basically. And so if you're like me, when you start playing my league or my GM, you, you see the event list, you see these things here, but you might have a general idea of how free agency works, but you might still have some questions. So the idea behind these videos I'm doing on my league uh, are to kind of help you answer those questions so you have a clearer picture of what to do in free agency and the other modes of uh, the other options in my league. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Coach2K. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell to get notified whenever I upload anything new so you don't miss any NBA 2K video I put out. And also, check out my fictional My League series. And my, I'll put a link to that in the corner, upper left-hand corner, so you can start with the very first episode. And So with that, let's get started. And let's talk about how free agency works in My League and My GM. Okay, so once the season ends and the playoffs is over, then the off season begins. And so when you're in your My League and My GM files, you're going to see a menu that takes you through all the different things you've got to address during the off season. And uh, specifically in this video, we're going to talk about the team and player options. I did a video on how team and player options work, and I'll put a link to that in the left hand, upper left hand corner of the video. And so that gives you a little more information on specifically how those work. Then uh, after team and player options, uh, it's the qualifying offers to restricted free agents and how that's handled. And then after restricted free agency is unrestricted free agency and that's here. So we're gonna walk through each of these and go through kind of things you need to think about when that's happening. So. Let's get started and then we'll start with team and player options and what you want to think about there. Okay, free agency starts with team and player options. So let's look inside of team and player options here. And you're going to see a pretty simple screen. And this just lists the players that have options on their contract. So they can even either have a player option like Jimmy Butler does. And if you look at his contract screen, you can see in green here he has to decide if he wants to just take his player option, which would pay him $19.84 million, or decline it and become an unrestricted free agent. Now, if he felt like he was gonna make less money in being an unrestricted free agent, like if nobody would pay him more than $19.84 million, he'd probably take his player option. But if for some reason he felt like he could go out and make $28 million, $30 million by signing as an unrestricted free agent, then he's going to turn down that player option. So in this case, you can see that Jimmy Butler has told the team that he's going to decline his player option. And so what that means is, is that he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. The Sixers won't get anything out of him. And then whoever wants to sign him, whoever Jimmy Butler comes to terms with, he can, uh, he'll be playing for them from that point forward. So. Jimmy Butler won't be playing in the Miley file for the 76ers because he declined his player option. Now, the other option is, is that like Jonathan Simmons here, he has a team option. And in this case, the 76ers, which were under CPU control before this, declined to accept his team options. So when you look at his contract here, he had $5.7 million team option and the team decided they didn't want to have him on the team anymore. Didn't feel like he was worth $5.7 million or he didn't fit in or whatever, then they're just going to let him go and he becomes an unrestricted free agent just like Jimmy Butler does. And so Jimmy Butler and Jonathan Simmons will move into uh, unrestricted free agency where they can sign with any team. Jimmy Butler is definitely going to sign with somebody. We don't know about Simmons because, you know, obviously he's not as good a player as Jimmy Butler. Now, in the case of the Pacers here, you can see that Sabonis, for example, under his contract, he also has a team option. And so that's $3.53 million. And so if you're controlling the Pacers, you have to decide, just like we did on Simmons a minute ago, is that worth it? And Sabonis is a great player. he probably be a starter in the league. So a team option to get him for $3.53 million is a bargain. So obviously, you know, we're going to accept that team option. And then hopefully we can renegotiate, we can negotiate a contract extension with him 
during this off season so that we can get him to a long-term deal. So uh, what that means is, is that, you know, he would, he, once we accept that team option, then nobody can take Sabonis away for us, from us for this particular year. And same way with these other guys down here. So what you have to do is go in and decide, is this player worth it? If it's a team option and the player is going to let you know if it's a player option. And, you know, I've got this under 30 team control, so I can look and see around the league what's happened with all the team and player options and give me some idea of, of what who's going to hit free agency. So, like, you know, looking at the Sixers here, this tells me that, hey, Jimmy Butler is going to be available here because he declined his player option. And, you know, where meanwhile, if I go over to the Celtics in the file, uh, Al Horford, he accepted his player option, so that means that, you know, he won't be available for me to sign, but Kyrie Irving would. So pretty simple team and player options as far as what you have to do inside of your My League file. You have to address the team options and the players let you know whether they're going to take their options. Once you advance through, once you advance past the team and player options, once you've decided what to do, then Basically, you get a summary of what everybody decided to do. Now, I didn't mention it, but when you're accepting or declining team options, you just use X to you know, toggle between the different options of what you can do for them. So anyway, that's how you go through the process for team and player options. And so now we know, for example, when we're, we know Kevin Durant declined his player option. He's going to be available. We know Ke Kyrie Irving is going to be available. We know Horford's not. But a lot of these guys, like there's John Collins, so the Hawks, he accept, uh, they accepted his team option. So this tells us who's available now that uh, every team and player has decided how they want to exercise their option. Okay, after you've addressed the team and player options, the next step in free agency is to address restricted free agents. And if you want to retain a restricted free agent, then you got to give them a qualifying offer. So let's first talk about res what restricted free agents are, and then we'll talk about what qualifying offers are and what they do, and we'll do some examples here. All right, the first example of a restricted free agent is following the fourth year of a rookie contract for first round draft picks. So you can see D'Angelo Russell here, he was drafted in 2015, and the team must have accepted the team options, but between the third and fourth season, they didn't sign any uh, contract extension. So that means that he played through the fourth year of his contract and now he's a restricted free agent. So the first type of free agent, the first type of restricted free agent is a guy coming off the fourth year of his rookie contract. All right, the second type of restricted free agent are for all veteran free agents who've been in the, the NBA for three seasons or less. So Maxi Kleber, I'm not sure how you say his name, he's been a pro for two years. He came into the league undrafted and he didn't have a, a rookie contract. So he has less than three years experience in the league. And so because of that, as a veteran free agent with less than three years of experience, then in his case, he's a restricted free agent. Now, the only exception to that is that if you had a player that their team option uh, wasn't exercised by the team, well, then those players are uh, considered unrestricted free agents because the team just let them go. So let me see if I can find an example of that. Okay, an example of a free agent who has less than two years of experience and a team in the file here declined their team option is Semi Ojale. So like here you can see that Boston declined his team option. And so in his case, he had that team option sitting out there and since they did and they declined it, well then even though he has less than three years experience in the NBA, he's no longer a restricted free agent he'll be an unrestricted free agent. He can sign with anybody he wants when uh, unrestricted free agency begins. So that's the second type of restricted free agent that might be out there, a veteran free agent less than two years, unless the 
team option was not exercised by the team, then in that case, a player like that would become a unrestricted free agent. So let's talk about the third type of restricted free agent. All right, then the, the third type of restricted free agent is a player that's coming off of a two-way contract that was on an active NBA roster for at least 15 days. So like in the Mavericks case here, you see this little two next to Costas, whatever his name is, and next to Macon. Both these guys uh, are on two-way contracts. That's what the two means. They're on an active NBA roster, and that means that uh, they were for more than 15, 15 days, and that means that they're a restricted free agent. So if we look at the Mavericks uh, qualifying offers page here, you can see that both those two guys are on two-way contracts. We have to decide we, whether we want to hang on to them or not and make them a qualifying offer. So now that we know what a restricted free agent is, well, next comes the qualifying offers. Now qualifying offer is, you know, what is that? Well, it's a standing offer for a one-year deal and if the player signs it, then it becomes a, a real contract. But what it does by extending a qualifying offer to a player on our roster is that once that player goes out and checks with other teams in the league to see if you know anybody wants to sign him, you know they'll give him an offer sheet. And that offer sheet, if we decide we want to match it, we have right of first refusal, and we can match it and retain that player but if we don't match it, then that player can go play for that team under the offer that they were given from them. So under qualifying offers, we have a choice to extend an offer, which gives us the right to match any contract that player is offered by any other team in the league, or we have the right to not offer a qualifying offer to that player. And if we don't offer a qualifying offer to that player, then that player is an unrestricted free agent and they can just decide to go play for whoever they want. But, you know, somebody that we want to hang on to, you know, like for example, on the Pacers, um, you know, I don't know that I care too much about Devon Reed. Let's look through here, like D'Angelo Russell, obviously the Nets wanted to keep him. And so they extend a qualifying offer. So again, that gives them the right of first refusal of any other contract offer D'Angelo Russell might receive. So. What qualifying offers is, you just have to go into your team and decide, do I want to keep this player or not? And if you do, you got to extend them an offer. Now, the amount of the offer is already predetermined based on contracts and everything. So you don't have to figure out what you want the offer to be. It's just automatically calculated for you based on the rules of supposedly the collective bargaining agreement or whatever 2K is put in here. Okay, now that we got qualifying offers sorted out, the next step is free agency and that's divided into two sections the moratorium period which is when teams can negotiate with free agents but they can't officially sign them and then after the moratorium period then that's when the signing period starts so you'll first go into the moratorium period so let's go have a look at what you'll do when you get into the, to the moratorium part of free agency okay so when you go in here basically you get a message that pops up that says you can verbally agree to deals, which can be signed when the signing period starts. So basically you can go in here and make some offers and then advance to the beginning of the free agent signing period. Now on the first day of the moratorium, when you first go in there, you'll see the available players. You can go in there and, and make some offers to some of those players. What I did first was I just advanced to the end of day one and in here, you're going to see that you have an option to either hold cap space or renounce rights for players. So what this means is, is that like in the case of Young, Matthews, Joseph, Tyreek Evans, and Kyle O'Quinn, we've decided to renounce their rights. So you can do that or you can cap hold. And what this means is, is that like Young, Matthews, Joseph, Evans, and Quinn, they're all on one. This was the last year of their contract. So they're all free agents but what this is about is is if we want to re-sign them which we have decided we don't want to sign the guys that we've renounced the rights to but we are interested in possibly re-signing Collison and Bogdanovich when we re-sign them since they're our current players and we hold their rights then what that means is, is if we want to sign them for money that might put us over the salary cap because of bird years and any other 
uh, exception to the cap, we retain those rights by leaving the cap hold on there. So you'll want to go in and decide who you want to just renounce the rights to that you're not interested in signing and who you want to retain the rights to. And that's what the cap hold means. And it allows you to kind of maybe negotiate a contract higher uh, that would put you over the cap because of bird rights or whatever other uh, contract exception there might be. Now you can also, you know, in addition to the cap hold and the renounce rights screen, if you hit R2, it'll take you over to pending offers. And you can see here like in the Pacers, they have a qualifying offer out to Devon Reed. So Devon Reed is a restricted free agent. Nobody has offered him a contract yet, but we have that offer out there. Now, I'm also controlling the Nets and the Bucks here. So like on the Nets, what they did was they have a qualifying offer out to Williams and Kemba Walker, uh, they made an offer to him during the moratorium, but he accepted an offer from another team. And uh, so the other team I'm working on is the Bucks here. And we've noticed that Malcolm Brogdon, he is a restricted free agent and the Bucks we're in a situation where they made him a qualifying offer. And so uh, the Bucks organization has to decide whether they're gonna match this offer. So they can decide to decline it, which means they'd also re renounce his rights, or they could uh, match his offer. So in this case, you can see they've offered him a two year, $40.2 million contract. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and and match that just to show you how that works. But if you wanted to decline it, this is how you would do it. So, so day two of the moratorium period is just like day one. The only exception is, is that you'll have some players that have accepted some offers. So here, these are the available players. And the most noticeable thing, thing I see right off the bat is that that uh, Kevin Durant is not there. So if I hit R1, I can go to sign players. You can see these are all the players that have agreed to sign with uh, teams already. So Durant has agreed to sign with the 76ers, Irving with the Celtics, Porzingis with the Mavericks, Thompson with the Warriors, and so on. So that means if we want to sign one of those guys, we can't do it now. We have to look and see who's left. <clears throat> so let's just make an offer to somebody here. Let's make, uh, let's find a point guard. We'll make an offer to Derrick Rose. Now he has some offers out there already, a one year deal. So let's negotiate a contract with him and we'll just give him whatever shows on the screen here. So now we have an offer out to Derrick Rose. And so let's advance through. Oh, you can see here that D'Angelo Russell has agreed to a offer from the Clippers. And so we have an opportunity to match that contract. So now at the end of the day here, you see <clears throat> that Derek Rose has agreed to uh, terms. So he's going to sign with us. If we go over to the Nets, we have an opportunity to match the contract. So let's just decline. Let's just, uh, we'll go ahead and match that uh, just like the other one. But you could decline it if you want. Yeah, I want to point out here that at the end of day two, that if I wanted to, if I, if I sign Derrick Rose, I might want to get rid of Collison now. And so you can see here, Bogdanovich, the rights to Bogdanovich have been renounced. And the reason that is, is because he puts us over the salary cap. So what we might do instead is renounce Collison and see if we could hold Bogdanovich since he is at the small forward position. So those are the things you got to think about when you're going through free agency. You got to think about what kind of, what kind of players you want to target who you want to keep, you got to manage your salary cap, and uh, those kind of things. Just remember, you know, to manage your salary cap, you just go into the salary cap table, you can see what you got going on each year. And I have a link to the salary cap video I did called Salary Cap 101. I'll put that up in the left-hand corner instead of going through all the rules of the salary cap here. The free agency period here that comes after the moratorium period, the screens are pretty much exactly the same. The main difference is, is when you're in the actual free agent signing period, you can use your mid-level exception. And I talk about that in my salary cap 101 video that I did a little bit more to kind of let you know what the mid-level exception is. So you'll just want to advance through here and, and players you want to target, try and negotiate contracts with. 
players uh, uh, may sign with other teams. You may have to do kind of a backup plan. But when you go into free agency, you kind of want to have some thought about, okay, who do I want? Who do I not want? And so I'm just going to send through each of these days here. You can see that, like in the case of the Pacers here, no one's decided to match his offer or uh, to offer a contract to Devon Reed. So we, ha we don't have to make a... Uh, we don't have any offer we have to match. So that means we'll save a little money on Reed if we decide to. So let me send him to the end of the free agency period. And at the end of the free agency period, since I offered a, I had a qualifying offer out to Devon Reed, he's decided to take the qualifying offer because he didn't get any other offers from around the league. And we didn't have to worry about matching that offer as the Pacers. Now, once you go through the free agency period, what I always recommend that you do because during year three and four of a rookie contract, that's when you can do a contract extension for your rookies. And so you'll wanna go into the front office to your contract extensions and just see if for some reason, if you have a rookie like Sabonis, who's, this is the summer before his fourth year of his contract, uh, to see if he's decided he'll, if he will resign, if he won't. And that way, if he will, you can go ahead and take care of it now. Otherwise, if he won't, then, uh, you know, he's going to become ineligible once the season starts. So if I didn't mention, I'll have a link to the video talking about rookie contract extensions up in the left-hand corner. All right, so that's a good breakdown of what happens in free agency and the decisions that you're going to have to make. And so, you know, it starts with, am I going to exercise my team options? I'm going to find out which players have accepted their player options. Then for any restricted free agents, we're going to extend qualifying offers to the ones that we want to keep, which gives us the right to match any offer they might receive from any other team in the league or to players we're not going to offer a qualifying offer to who we're just going to be letting go. And then the free agency period, which is the moratorium when you can come to agreements and the actual signing period where you actually sign the free agents. You may or may not get what you want. And at some point I'll do a video on contract negotiation but the main thing I want to accomplish with this video is just to let you know the mechanics behind what happens in the offseason as far as free agency is concerned and of course you would go through the rest of these items and then you advance to the offseason and you know go from there and see how uh, free agency treated you as you start the next season and how your team does all right so let me know in the comments you got any questions about how the free agency period works and if you got any tips, anything I've left out, because it's a long video, it's hard to remember to put everything in here. And, um, you know, just you know, let me know what you're thinking. And while you're here, check out my other videos. I've got lots of videos, including my series. And so hopefully you'll check those out. All right, I'm Coach 2K. I'll see you on the court in the next video. And thanks for watching.